स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Welcome back. In lecture 55, we will uh, cover the third part of artificial sewage uh, treatment, and we will look into some advanced methods. So, the concepts that we will cover would be on sequential uh, sequencing batch reactors and membrane bioreactor, and we will also do two product studies: one for sequencing batch reactor and one for membrane bioreactor. So, sequencing batch reactor is a variation of the activated sludge process and as you can understand from the term itself uh, it's a we have a reactor that means a chamber where the actual uh, reaction takes place and the, this is done in sequences that means within the same chamber we can do multiple uh, stages of treatment in sequences so that's why it's called a sequencing batch reactor and because we can all do all the different processes in one chamber obviously the area requirement would be much much lesser so sbs has been used worldwide since 1920s so it's a old technology it's not that new and it's uh, it could be used for uh, low flow low and or varying flow patterns so that means it is not effective for very large volume of waste water only for low volume and but the beauty is uh, this aeration devices inside the device or the opening and closing of certain valves everything could be computer controlled so this could be an automatic process in which the entire uh, uh, this uh, sewage gets treated and the final fully digested sludge the final volume of sludge is also very very less and because this, uh, the more or less the organic matter gets fully digested and that's that all that means the final disposal is also very little so that that makes it very very effective for decentralized treatment and maybe for large residential complexes this this would be the best method to actually go for so in this particular image you can see the different stages or the sequences so incoming influent wastewater so the first stage is fill then react then settle then decant and then idle so and in the the processes are mixing and aeration these are the two basic processes that means we mix the wastewater with the existing sludge which holds the bacteria and all and aeration is the process of putting air inside the this particular chamber so in a, it's a activated sludge process we use both air as well as we use existing sludge to start the biological reactions so sorry this uh, let let it be here uh, so in the field stages uh, the sequencing batch reactor so we have discussed the different stages in the first stage in this particular phase the basin receives the wastewater that is food for the microbes that is already there in the activated sludge which is already there in the chamber so that means some amount of sludge is already there in the chamber and the wastewater as soon as it comes in this for this act, uh, microbes this is uh, organic matter is the food and it starts consuming and then further growing right and gradually the organic matter in the wastewater gradually reduces so uh, but this mixing and aeration can be varied during the fill phase so during the particular fill phase either we can have a aerated fill that means or a mixed fill or a static fill so as you can understand in the static fill process neither mixing there are mechanical mixtures or fans in, the, in this particular chamber neither mixing takes place neither aeration takes place now that means in this particular condition uh, anoxic conditions takes place that means there is no oxygen in this particular mixture and that is when denitrification occurs so some amount of denitrification occurs because of that and then we can have mixed fill that means where the mixing is hap happens but the aeration doesn't happen so that is also a stage where some amount of anoxic condition is there and there also denitrification happen or there could be aerated fill that means we start the aeration process as well 
Now, as you understand, aeration uh, leads to activi act, act, uh, activities by the aerobic bacteria, and aerobic bacteria, their nitrification can also happen. So, uh, in SBR, we can also make sure that along with the normal decomposition or the, the stabilization of organic content, we also can do nitrification, denitrification effectively as well. So, in the react phase, that is after the filling has been done with influent wastewater in the react phase, this is uh, where most of the BOD removal or reduction occurs and mechanical mixing and aeration units operate on the wastewater and the rate of organic removal increases dramatically because the more amount of food is consumed, more amount of bacteria is formed that actually increases the BOD removal rate gradually. And this is the react phase. So, this is the main phase and once this react phase is completed that means more or less all the organic matter is being consumed. Then we have the settled phase where activated sludge is allowed to settle and no further wastewater is allowed to enter into this particular system or this particular basin. And activated sludge uh, because there is no flocule, there is no mixing, there is no aeration this sludge actually the flock or sludge that is formed that actually settle and this uh, settle as a flocculent mass forming a distinct interfa interface with the clear supernatant. So, that means when it settles there is the gradually this you can see the gray matter gradually coming down and you can see the clear supernatant or the clear liquid at the top. And finally, in the decant phase a uh, decanter is used to remove and uh, the uh, and uh, remove and clear the effluent. Uh, decanter you can say that we can just put in one cunt, uh, one sort of uh, you know uh, a device which actually scoops up the clean water from the top that is a decanter, but actually we use valves that means we will allow certain valves to open at certain levels. So, that the upper clear liquid actually moves out of this particular chamber. So, effluent discharge valve opens and one settle phase is finished and then this actually removes the uh, you know clear water and because it is done like that. So, that means there is no need for separate clarifiers or clarification because already we have got settled sludge below. So, some amount of sludge remains some because uh, you know uh, this there is constant aeration and all this sludge is full almost fully digested. So, the quantity of sludge is also not that much. So, we can keep this and we can repeat the entire process and sometimes some amount of sludge is also cleaned up or taken out from this particular chamber. So, finally, we have the idle phase uh, in the particular idle phase. Uh, this is a period uh, between the decant phase and the fill phase and the, we give some amount of time for this you know for the stabilization of this particular sludge and this uh, time varies as per the influent flow rate and the overall operating strategy. So, uh, when we have a SBR, so that means a sequencing batch reactor, we also need to do some preliminary or primary treatment. So, we do have to do screening of the influent wastewater, so that we do not uh, uh, bring in plastics or other floating matter into the wastewater chamber uh, into the SBR chamber and we also need to do flow equalization. So, for that we can have flow equalization tank because SBRs cannot handle too much of load and neither it can handle too much of varying flow. So, it is critical uh, flow equalization is critical because the flow rates uh, very, uh, this organic loading of that the total quantity of wastewater, the total organic loading has to be of a certain value only. So, that is what is you know this flow equalization is actually a mandatory process before this SPR. So, the presence of this equalization tank also reduces the size of the SBR basin. Uh, it also allows uh, if there are multiple basins it you can also helps to, uh, you know if there are this equalization tank you can actually do some amount of maintenance work on the basins when you know you can keep that uh, incoming wastewater stored in the equalization tank. Then it also allows some scum and grease removal at a single point before it enters the SBR tank. So, we can also have this scum and grease removal also done in the equalization tank and allows for an equal volume of uh, flow into the basin keeping the food to microorganism ratio FM ratio fairly stable. So, that is the quantity of food to the quantity of microorganism this ratio has to be maintained and this is possible only to the uh, presence of this uh, equalization tanks. 
So, sometimes uh, we also add a tertiary filtration unit following the SBR treatment. So, this is pre treatment. Similarly, there we can have post treatment where a tertiary filtration unit is added to the SBR treatment, which further improves the discharge quantity quality. That means, the decanted effluent or decanted volume could be further treated using this filtration unit. So, total suspended solid values uh, is usually uh, in the discharge is less than 10 milligrams per liter and BOD level is less than 5 milligrams per liter. So, you can see if you remember the final uh, uh, you know the discharge volumes and all these are almost achieving that kind of levels and treatment cycles can be adjusted to undergo aerobic, anaerobic and anoxic conditions in order to achieve biological nutrient removal including nitrification, denitrification and some phosphorus removal. So, that means, we not only do biological nutrient removal that means, the organic matter removal, but some amount of nitrification, denitrification and phosphorus removal can be done by changing the uh, aerobic, anaerobic and anoxic conditions inside the tank. So, aerobic conversion of ammonia to nitrates this is nitrification and this happens uh, when aerobic conditions prevail. Whereas, in anoxic uh, conditions prevail as we were saying during the fill phase uh, anoxic condition prevails if we do not do aeration and this converts nitrates to nitrogen gas which is denitrification. So, so, that means eventually the amount of nitrogen is less than 5 milligrams per liter and phosphorus is also less than 2 milligrams per liter. So, this is what we can achieve via SBR. So, let us look at some uh, one product. So, this is you can see this is one product where it is a you know unit, it is a compact unit uh, design and the, the different processes inside this particular unit you can see the incoming wastewater is first taken through a bar screen, then there is the equalization tank in between, then from the equalization tank the wastewater goes into the SBR and from the SBR it uh, some amount of sludge is taken to the sludge handling unit because uh, some amount of sludge has to be removed and then the treated water goes into the treated water tank and as you can see that uh, this parameters after treatment like pH, TSS, uh, total suspended solids, BOD, COD, oil and grease and then uh, total uh, nitrogen, total phosphorus. You can see the quantity inside the raw water that is 6 to 8. 250 parts per million, 250 parts per million for BOD, COD 500 parts per million, 40 ppm for oil and grease and so on. So, the treated water, the primary treatment this one is comes to around you know TSS is less than 30 ppm, BOD is less than 20, COD is less than 100 and oil and grease less than 10 and, and so on. Now, after this we can again take it through some other filters which are secondary filters also known as uh, like you know uh, specific filters and then it further reduces to maybe TSS reduces to less than 10 ppm, then uh, this nitrogen becomes less than 8 ppm and 1 ppm and if we give another further tertiary treatment to this that means, we add a, a filter then we can further reduce it to uh, maybe uh, uh, 2 ppm of TSS, uh, then uh, less than 5 ppm of BOD and less than 3 ppm of nitrogen and so on, which is more or less as per the discharge uh, standards that we have and we can use it, we can further use this kind of water. So, what kind of reuse applications? It could be used for gardening, toilet flushing, landscape, irrigation, cooling tower, car washing, cooling tower for air conditioners, uh, fire sprinklers, concrete mixing and other con construction application and was mostly for non portable use. So, this is not for portable use. And what is the size of this uh, particular commercial uh, unit? Uh, size could be like if you want to treat around 10 cubic meter per day, the size is could be limited to 4 meter by 1.6 meter, 2.2 meter, it is very compact. But if it is like around 100 cubic meter per day, then probably the dimensions comes to around 10 meter into 3 meter into 3 meter. So, that gives you an idea about the compactness of this kind of systems. The next technique that we will talk about is the membrane bioreactor and as you can see in this particular image there is a membrane and on the other side of the membrane there is that you know this wastewater which is mixed with uh, bacteria and this bacteria consume this uh, you know the solid the organic matter and finally, the clean water passes through this membrane and then we can uh, get clean water. 
So, over here what we are doing is uh, this in, uh, MVRs integrate a semi permeable membrane with a biological process. So, biological process is the organic uh, you know this use of this uh, uh, aeration or you know this bacteria for consumption of this uh, organic matter. This is the biological process and we are also using a semi permeable membrane which helps in which, which is the filtration process. So, we are combining a filtration and a biological treatment process. So, uh, so you can say that this membrane process is like a micro filtration and, and this entire this membrane is suspended uh, in a bioreactor. So, that this bio, so that is why this combination happens. So, the membrane is basically uh, suspend, uh, 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 this is a combination of a membrane process like microfiltration with a suspended growth bioreactor. So, this is widely used in municipal and industrial wastewater treatment and plant sizes could actually treat around 80,000 people. So, again you know this sizes could vary, but eventually you know even we can treat up till this 80,000 number of people could be uh, the wastewater generated from this kind uh, you know number of people could be treated using this MBR systems. So, membranes uh, are submerged in an aerated biological reactor. So, sometimes it is uh, attached with this particular bioreactor, sometimes it is separated, we will show that. So, the membrane porosity is around 0 0.035 microns to 0 0.4 microns, which is between micro and ultra filtration. So, in this particular image, you can see this is the influent, uh, you know, this is a screen, uh, this is the raw water that is coming in, and this is taken by a screen, and this is the first zone which is anoxic zone. So, that means, there is no aeration denitrification takes place and then it moves to the next zone where there is mixed liquor recirculation pump. So, that means, uh, this is where sludge is already there and this is where bio this is basically a bioreactor and then we are actually mixing the incoming wastewater with the existing sludge and then this, uh, this uh, then the organic matter is gradually being consumed and then uh, this uh, this is a aeration blower. So, that means, air is also blown into the system and finally, over here we have this pump which actually pumps this uh, mixed liquor after, after some amount of digestion into this uh, next module which is the membrane module and we uh, then we actually this uh, some amount of this module uh, this is actually uh, uh, pushed through this particular membrane and whatever Ent water enters into the membrane that is the treated water that is taken out. Uh, this is the perm and then there is a, a permeate pump which actually creates a vacuum or which sucks in the water from through the membrane because other if there is no pressure difference between the membrane and this particular chamber where the waste water is then there would not be any movement of water. So, a, a permeate pump actually creates that negative pressure which sucks in the water via this filter units or this filtration you know uh, uh, systems. So, this is basically the membrane through which the water is sucked in and some amount of this, uh, so gradually the water is sucked in that means sludge increases, the volume of sludge in this particular content increases, this is actually taken back and then you can reuse some of this sludge back into this particular chamber. So, this entire system is a cyclic process and, uh, and then we also have air scouring blower which is used to blow what air through this particular filter. So, that the pores of the filter is unclogged and this, uh, this uh, material goes back into this particular uh, this, um, this waste water or this mixed liquor uh, and then uh, this in this process the filters are also cleaned. So, there is no need for sedimentation and biological process can operate at much higher mixed liquor concentration. So, you will see that this uh, the volume of mixed liquor, uh, the amount of uh, it is very, the amount of water is actually very less and this bio, this membranes can uh, work in very, very uh, you know con in conditions where uh, the mixed liquor concentration is pretty high. So, uh, similar to SBR, we also need to do some pre-treatment. So, we also have to uh, like we there has to be screens and so on and then there is then uh, equalization tanks has to be there and then of course, we have to also think about the membrane arrangement either it could be internal to this particular chamber and submerged or it could be external or uh, it is also called side stream. 
that means in the previous process you have shown that we have the separate chamber for the biological uh, reactor the the, uh, the biological process that is happening the aeration as well as the uh, organic uh, you know decomposition uh, or organic stabilization so there you and the sphere and the, from there we are pumping the uh, mixed liquor into that particular filtration chamber uh, that is you know that's uh, uh, external system whereas we can also have this particular chamber in the same chamber this particular filtration units in the same chamber itself or this particular membranes in the same chamber itself so the in this image you can see uh, that we have got two chambers this is the uh, this is the incoming uh, uh, wastewater this is the aeration tank where the mixing is happening this is a biological reactor and after that we have the uh, this uh, you know this particular system and you can see this is how the filters are arranged and we are pumping the water and uh, we are using this uh, this is we are using these two pumps one is the permeate pump which actually sucks in the water and the other is for blowing uh, the pump uh, the uh, the, uh, the other pump is used for blowing air to unclog the pores of that particular filter so this unclogging of pores of the filter is known as fouling and fouling control that means uh, first fouling happens because the pores get fouled or pores get filled and then we have to have control uh, we have to clean that so that is fouling control so there could be different ways of doing the achieving that so the first process is known as intermediate permeation so where particles deposit on the membrane su surface tend to diffuse back into the reactor so sometimes when we suck in that particular from the filter then it gets stuck then when the, that permeation process is stopped then basically it falls back into that particular uh, you know this mixed liquor and then uh, we have membrane backwashing which where a permeate water is pumped back to the membrane so that means we can either put in air or water through which we can clean the filters that means we have a backflow and that actually cleans up the this backwash so that actually cleans up that particular membrane or it could be via air where pressurized air uh, in the permeate side of the membrane is built up and released uh, which releases a significant pressure and then cleans up the pores as well and in addition we have got proprietary anti fouling products made by several companies which could be also in uh, used for cleaning up this particular filters so the filters are of different shapes as you can see in this most of the filters that you're showing are like plate and frame kind of filters where we can have plate of these filters but we can have several filters like a hollow fiber filter like this is sort of a chamber where you can see that uh, there are several filters inside this particular chamber and this is put inside this particular reactor and you can see this reactor where you can see the density of the mixed liquor so the, here the sludge is uh, you know density is pretty high but again still it can get the water out via this particular uh, you know this filters that we can put in so there this there this filters that are used as membrane bioreactors are hollow fibers spiral lumund systems plate and frame systems uh, which is like a flat sheet system or pleated filter cartridge or tubular systems and so on so this is how the the filters are arranged or the membranes are arranged and that actually is uh, makes up the different arrangements of this membrane makes up different kinds of filter so mbs can be installed in uh, residential units uh, because these are small compact systems uh, but we have to make sure that uh, because it involves sewage treatment uh, it may generate methane gas so it should be away from car parking areas or other areas prone to fire so usually it's a underground structure with compact design and completely covered and there is no foul order around this kind of uh, stp where we use mbr so the sludge generation is also very low because most of the sludge is digested the power consumption is around 50 to 70% less compared to a conventional aerobic treatment process and this kind of operation doesn't requires monitoring and uh, operation and it has got extremely low maintenance and it works uh, well with inconsistent uh, inconsistent gray water flow and semi automatic and automatic plant operation so that means we can uh, use different kind of uh, you know operations uh, that means we can uh, uh, we can monitor them remotely as well so this kind of operations are much more convenient and it's environmentally safe to dispose treated sewage water on land and water so the discharge quality is pretty good 
and treated water can be used for gardening, toilet flushing, landscape irrigation, construction and so on. So, again uh, uh, we have this commercial unit uh, as you can see uh, the treatment uh, the sequence of treatment is we have wastewater collection then there is pretreatment which is screening, grease removal and so on. E then the water comes to the equalization tank from there we have the anoxic tank then the aeration tank and then there is the membrane tank. So, these are all put together and finally, from the membrane tank we can have sludge treatment from here we can take out the sludge and some amount of sludge can go back and this can go back into the anoxic tank and the blower is there this is to ensure aeration and then we have the treated water that is taken out from the this particular membrane tank. We have a dosing tank through which we can use uh, chlorine and other to further uh, dis, dis, for the disinfection we can add those uh, you know chemicals as well and finally, we have got treated water. So, the parameters uh, that are uh, you can see similar to the last uh, SBR, uh, we have pH, TSS, BOD, COD and so on. So, the inlet uh, water that is the incoming water is 300 ppm of TSS, BOD is 300 ppm, nitrogen is 30 ppm. Once that uh, it is treated via this MBR, you can see that TSS is less than 1 m, uh, 1 uh, you know this uh, ppm and BOD is less than 5 ppm, nitrogen is less than 3. So, more or less you can use this water, reuse this water for most of the other purposes. So, what sort of capacity or size of these plants? Like for example, if you treat 25 meter cube per day, membrane area required is 60 uh, meter square, whereas length, width and height could be something around 4, 2 and 2. But this is for this particular commercial uh, product, but for different companies they will have different sizes. So, 150 meter cube per day in that case the membrane area would be 360 meter square and uh, the, you know the size of this particular unit would be 11.2 into 2.2 into 2.2 meter. And as you can understand the membrane area is a lot. So, that is why we have to organize it in a certain way like we have to wound the membranes into one spiral or it has to be uh, you know put in you know plates one after another. So, that we can increase the surface area of contact. Right. So, that is why uh, this is uh, and the other thing is we have to uh, in this particular system the membranes has to be replaced at certain intervals and also it needs to be cleaned uh, regularly. So, these are the issues with uh, this MBA system, but otherwise these are very compact units, these are very very effective in treating uh, this wastewater. So, to conclude SBR and MBR units require much less area compared to conventional treatment units and are appropriate for decentralized application and the, qu uh, the quality of the discharge is also appropriate for reuse applications. So, these are the references you can study. Thank you.